Hello! This week we're going to be doing the next stage of our self-portraits and we're going to be adding lots of detail to the background and we're going to be decorating your head and your body with all sorts of interesting things that really express who you are as an individual. So let's get started! To do this you will need your self-portrait that we started last week. If you haven't started one yet that's okay you can go to the first video where we did this together. You will also need a pencil, a mirror so that you can look closely at your own face and it's really helpful if you've got a rubber and a pencil sharpener. Now for this stage of our self-portrait we might actually all end up doing something completely different because we're going to choose what we want to draw based on the things that we want to express about ourselves, so the things that are important to you or the things that show people what sort of personality you have. So for me, the things that are really important are nature. I love being in nature. I love growing all of the plants that I've got. I don't know if you can see some on my windowsill here. I love growing plants. So for me, I'm going to put some of those things into my picture. But you might have something different that's really important that you want to draw. So you might want to join me and do a jungly leaf background. But if you want to do something different, maybe rainbow colours, maybe you want to do under the sea or a different scene in the background with mountains or dragons or anything that is interesting to you, go for it. Let your imagination absolutely run wild. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to do some leaves that are this shape. This is the simplest shaped leaf that I've got. And whatever you choose to do with your background, when you get to the edge of a part of your head, whether it's a bit of hair or a bit of your clothes, just make sure you leave that gap so you're not drawing lines over the top of your beautiful self-portrait. And through the centre, it's got a line like this. And then it has lots of lines curving outwards from that central one. If you are doing lots of small things in the background, like my leaves, it's really good to get them to overlap each other so that you've not just got gaps in between them and then it will really fill the whole background. So I'm going to start my next plant from behind this and I'm going to do some tall fat spikes because I have an aloe vera plant that I'm growing. It's got these fat spiky leaves. Um, and I think I will put some little spines on them. And then I'm going to have some palm leaves that I can see here. I'm going to have them coming in from the edge of my page because if you also get it to run all the way over to the edge it looks as though it carries on either side of your picture. I'm going to do a long stalk and I'm going to have some leaves coming off them like this. And can you notice I'm stopping when I get to the edge of another leaf so it looks as though it goes behind. Do the same here. And actually, I don't think that's enough. I'm going to fill in some of those gaps. do I want to do next? Okay I've got some little heart shaped leaves up here so let's have a little vine coming down. Nice fat vine.
in some of the leaves to make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm going to have some of them so that they're on their side. Some of them so that they're flat open. Some overlapping like this. Um, I'm also going to get a cacti in there. Why not? That would be really good. So let's have that round bit of a cacti here. Um, it's going to grow a big bit there. These are quite fun plants to draw because you can just make they can make them any shape, and they still look realistic. Now I'm going over the top of a leaf here, but that's fine because I've got a rubber that I'm going to use later. I can just rub out these lines that are inside this cactus and it will look fine. And I need something else on the top here. So I've got some little tomato plants growing. So let's see if I can do some little tomato leaves. These are quite spiky ones. Have to be careful to try and get them symmetrical. That's where it gets difficult. Ooh, not quite, but it's close enough. And then some little lines that run to each of those points. There we go. Let's have another one going behind that. So I'll start at the bottom. rest of it hidden behind that leaf. And I might do a really big leaf in the background because there's a lot of gaps in between this palm here. So let's see if I can just do this is quite tricky trying to go in between those gaps. go. I've got that one going through there. So now I'm going to just look around this background and look for any gaps that I can see that I can just put another leaf in or another plant in behind it so that this whole background when I come to paint it or colour it will be absolutely filled up. So one of my favourite plants is a weird fern it's got leaves with three lobes, three parts to them. So I'm going to get some of those in there. And let's have some overlapping here, going behind my shoulder. Um, let's do another one of those up there behind this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some little branches. I've got a plant called a maidenhair fern up here. It's got lots of tiny, tiny little leaves on it. So I'm going to see if I can do a branch of that coming down here with some stems coming off and I'm going to do lots of tiny tiny leaves they look a little bit like paws little paw prints and the fun thing with plants is you because you get so many completely different leaves you can actually make them up a little bit if you want to they'll still look realistic because you can have them pretty much any shape so you could really experiment with patterns and shapes. So I'm going to keep going and I'm just going to fill in any of the little gaps that I can see. So I've got a little gap down here, I've got some little gaps around here at the top until I've got my whole background filled with something. So yours could be leaves, it could be anything else, but just fill in that whole background. So now that I've filled up my background 
You can see there aren't any big gaps showing anywhere. I've tried to squeeze every inch full of the thing that I've chosen to draw. I'm just going to have a little look and see if there are any lines that need rubbing out. So I've drawn this cacti here to be in front of this big leaf. So I don't want this big leaf to show through too much. So I'm just going to rub out some of those lines a little bit. There we go. So it looks a bit more like my cacti is on top. And then here I've got another leaf on top of my cacti. So I'm going to rub out my cacti line. Quite tricky with this one to see what's what when I'm looking at it. Got to look quite closely. Um, I have some little lines here. I don't want to show up too much on that one. Okay, I think we've finished our background. So check that you're happy that you filled it with lines. The next thing that we're going to do is think about what animals do we really love because Frida Kahlo's pictures look incredible because she will put her pet animals or animals that are really important to her on her shoulders or somewhere in the background. So for me, I'm going to do a little bird sitting on my shoulder and I might do a little something on this shoulder too. I haven't decided yet. So you might want to have a look um, on the computer to find the animal that you want to draw so that you can look at what shape it is to make it a little bit easier to copy. And if you've got a picture of the animal sitting up or standing up, I think that'll be a lot easier to draw than one that's really stretched out. So I'm going to have a big round tummy on my bird and I'm going to have a round head here. And I'm going to curve that head down, a bit more of a straight back. And give it a little square tail. Curve it over. There we go. I'm going to add a little beak to the end of its nose. And then I'm going to rub out all of my lovely plants in the background so that they won't show through my animal too much. Okay, so I've rubbed out some of those lines. Don't worry if you can't completely get rid of them because when we come to paint or colour this, they'll disappear a little bit anyway. Um, and I'm going to give him some little legs going forwards. And birds often have that one, one sort of toe that goes backwards and then some other toes that go forwards. And I'm going to have my hair coming in front of him so that you can't really see too much of that anyway. So the little head, the little leg, sorry. Give him a wing that curves backwards. I'm going to pop eye just there. And the other details I'll decide when I come to colour him in. I can add any other details I want then. Okay. And you know, I think I'm quite happy with just that one animal, but if you want to, you could put another one on the other shoulder and you could have one on each. The thing that I am going to do though, I'm going to add a little bit of decoration to the top of my head. Now, Frida Kahlo often wore lots of colourful tropical flowers in her hair. So you can have a think about what you'd like to put on your head. Maybe you want a crown of leaves. Maybe you want to give yourself some antlers like a deer or you want to wear a crown, or maybe you want to wear a funny hat to show that you're a bit of a comedian, that you like being funny. So choose what you would like to decorate your head with. I think I'm going to see if I can add in some flowers to add a bit more bright colour because my background's going to end up quite green. So if you want to do flowers like me, you can start off with a circle shape. So I'm, I'm going to try and do a rose for this one. Circle shape with a bit of an S in the middle. That could be the centre of your rose. And then you can just start adding petals around the outside and overlapping those petals. Making them get bigger and bigger as they get to the outside. And then the last petal, I'll, also, I'll often do a little wave in it like that. 
So when they get really big, it's almost like they start to crease inside a little bit. There we go. And um, let's do some that are sort of bell shaped flowers. So a nice curve with a zigzag edge, and then you can add a few petals in between as well. And I might add the stamen on the inside with some little balls on there. Um, and then you can you might want to put some leaves coming out from it. The key to doing anything like this is overlapping lots of things. So I've got these two flowers next to each other, so I want something to overlap them here. I'm just going to have some big petals of a different flower overlapping. Maybe you want a flower a bit like a daisy, so we're going to do a circle for the centre and then longer thinner petals coming out. Might do another one of those over here. Maybe we want some buds as well, so let's have a big fat rosebud, a bit like a tear shape. And I'm going to add the edges of the bud like this. There we go. Let's put a leaf in there as well. Pop in another rose. And smaller petals on the inside. I'm getting bigger as we start to come out and then the biggest ones with a little dip in the middle on the outside oh what other flowers could we do let's have some really tiny ones mixed in as well maybe on a little stalk Some of those coming down here too. So let's do another one of these bell shaped flowers so they've got a mixture. do something with long spiky petals so maybe coming from behind this daisy we could do something you know almost like a bird of paradise sort of flower I have another little leaf my flower crown and then let's do a small daisy hiding behind this one And one more rose in the middle. And whenever you're overlapping something like this, every time you get to the edge of something else, you just come up to the edge, stop your line, and then start again on the other side. Add in a few leaves to really fill it out. And there we go. So now we've got something on your head, something sitting on your shoulder, and a background that is absolutely full with detail. So we don't want to just have really boring clothes. That would ruin the effect a little bit. So we want to think about something that you want to put on your clothes to make them look really exciting. Maybe you want to give yourself um, your favourite football strip to wear or anything that you find really interesting i'm just going to add a bit more pattern to mine to make them a bit more exciting okay and then we are ready for next week now next week you'll need to get ready for yourself something to color this in and we've all got different things at home so if it's coloring pencils coloring pens that's absolutely fine I'm going to be using some paint with mine because it's a little bit easier to cover a big area and I can mix as many colours as I want. So if you do have some paint at home, 
that would be a fantastic thing to use to join me. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this week. As always, please send me pictures of how you're getting on. I'd love to see your self-portrait in progress. And I'm really excited to see you again here next week so that we can paint and colour our incredible pictures. See you soon.